Today we're going to do kind of a radio TV phono nut style video. Uh, what we have here is a GE clock radio from the 70s or 80s. They made these for a long time. Uh, this was given to me by a friend and it is a GE model 7-4305F has genuine walnut grain on polystyrene and it does and these were a common flip style clock and the first thing I do is I notice there's something rattling inside so before I plug this in we're gonna open it up and so flip it over and get the myriad of screws on it. Of course it's made in Singapore, um, not in the USA. GE was one of the first to start um, moving things overseas um, completely. Um, they started with their low end as many companies did, but pretty much moved everything over there by the 70s. Let's see. I think the face needs to come off to get the cover off. There we go. I'll probably break a plastic tab or two. Yeah, might be okay. Polish that up. So now we get to see it without the dirty face on. Let's see if it comes off or if I need to get a couple more things off. Okay, knobs on the side. Knob on the side. Okay, we have this AM FM switch here on the side. To be holding things on. So get it off. And there we go. Oh, I think I see what the problem is already. And yeah, so the speaker has broken loose from its mounting. Um, so, yeah, you can see where the mount was that somebody was screwed into to hold the speaker. And then there was this clip. So, yeah, we can see if we can fix that. Hopefully that part is still in here. And then I can just epoxy it in place. All kinds of warnings, you know. Oh, it runs on a hot chassis because it's got a line dropper resistor. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah, here's the other metal piece. So this is a good thing I didn't turn it on. Oh, and it's got the plastic on it, so I can epoxy that back in place. Let's see if there's anything else that, uh, any other prizes. Nope. All right. I'll set the speaker off to the side there. It, uh, <laughs> quality construction. You can see the speaker wire has been stripped and uh, just soldered. So, well, let's see if we get anything. Yeah. Let me grab one of the knobs because I'm probably going to want to. Let's turn it down. See if we get anything. Okay. It, uh, you won't be able to see this in the video, but it lights up this little neon bulb. Well, maybe. Let me kill some of the lighting.
Yeah, you can just about see the little neon way up there. So, we'll see in a moment if it actually... I think I can hear the motor running. But let's see if we've got any audio. Let's do this carefully because it's a hot chassis set. I think it's set on a, um, let's see if I can. Okay, it's not tuned in. No, it was, no that's the other. Sounds like we might have some dirty controls. Yeah. On FM. It's no band burner, but it's picking up most of the uh, stations in the Youngstown area. There's no will hum. I think that switch is a little dirty, so I'll clean that. Um, let's see. Anything else? I think it might just get left. What I have not seen is the clock moves, so I'll leave that plugged in for another minute or two, see if that works. So if not, that will need to be addressed, and that's going to be a whole different game, because I'm not sure on these mechanisms, but the radio works, at least on FM. Could try AM. And reassemble everything we just took apart. I'm trying to do this so I don't get zapped. Oh, that, that band switch is terrible. So, there's AM. Well, I could get the 5,000 watt station that's a couple miles from here. But yeah, I think I'll just clean up the contacts and we'll, uh, yeah, it seems to work. Like I said, I'll leave the clock running for another minute or two. I think the clock is not running. Um, that could just be some gummed up grease. So I will look into that. But yeah, it seems to work okay. And, and this, this front glass is filthy, but it'll clean up. And it'll polish up with some Meguiar's Plastex or Novus plastic polish. That'll polish up nice. And, um, yeah. And then just got to fix the speaker mount. Just right there. But luckily we have the plastic. So I can just mix up some quick fitting epoxy and shove that back in there after taking the uh, bracket off. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the clock is dead, so we'll need to look into that, but there we go. Alright, I'd removed the clock motor and its cover, 
and after removing I desoldered it so I could get it out of here and then found that the rotor here was completely stuck so I sprayed it with some electronics cleaner degreaser and now it spins very nicely it's before it was completely stuck so I have a feeling that it should be fine I'm going to let it dry I then have to mix up the epoxy to repair the speaker mount and then I may not replace the capacitors in here because uh, right now everything seems okay and this board is mounted to the tuning assembly and I would have to unstring it and it's really not worth it on something like this. Um, the tuning dial strings are always a bit of a pain and um, yeah so I think I'm gonna leave that because I didn't hear any hum. I still have to uh, clean the potentiometer and the, um, the switch here but I'm gonna get to mixing the epoxy so I can put the case back together and then we will go from there but it looks like this is going to be a good worker you know kind of a retro thing they're kind of cool uh, these were really low end um, but they seem to work okay I mean they were low end like most GE stuff of this time but they seem to work okay and they were everywhere